Good morning. Mark Mulligan from Golf Quest here to talk to you a little bit about the eBay business and sales, reselling business. It's a beautiful day here in Arizona. It's a great spring day, so I'm outside and um, going to go through some stuff. We have a lot of stuff to go through today, so hopefully uh, you can hang tight and learn a little bit about how the business is going and also what's selling because it's phenomenal right now. This is a real uh, high point of the year other than Q4 which is quarter four you know Christmas time this is a very good selling time especially for golf clubs uh, and shirts for weddings etc but I wanted to show you what I got at a deal uh, of course here's Abbey Road the Beatles beautiful poster got it for a buck and um, so we'll put it on eBay what I'll do with this one is I'll take the poster off the board and roll it and send it in a um, kind of a rolled container just because it's a hassle to send prints. Uh, I buy prints all the time, but mainly I, these days, let me get this out of here. I, I sell mostly local. In fact, take a look at this. This is a just a beautiful print right back here. There's Bobby Jones. I got that at a Sabres here the other day, a couple bucks, just spectacular. Now I'm going to keep that, but that, at the back of it, it has the price on it, $250 is what the guy bought it for, whoever bought it. And um, you know, in, a, in, a, in real time, and again, if you're going to try to sell things um, so it's high velocity, high volume, you would probably post it for about $50. Now, if you want to do the long tail, and you can sit on it for a while and hang it up in your house, like that's what I'm going to do, I'll be putting it in one of my offices or our house to enjoy it, and then at some point you might put $100 on it. But um, whenever you get into the prints, the matted and glass uh, stuff, it's difficult to ship. And I shouldn't say it's difficult, it's expensive. You have to buy the great big boxes. I'll go through it someday. And then I usually get them at U-Haul. And they're double walled. You have to just absolutely uh, probably spend about $50 on shipping and to get it right so you don't break them. And I sent them a bunch of them out and felt like the shipping ended up costing more than what the, um, the, the framed print went for. So. I would just sell the posters and the, uh, you know, the prints. So anyway, we had a great couple weeks. Um, it's just phenomenal. One thing I have to share with you, I did hit a treasure. And you don't hit treasures very often, like this one. But the other day, I was at, um, I'm going to take this out. I went to a Goodwill, and I couldn't believe my eyes. And you folks that aren't golfers won't understand this particular club, but this is a Scotty Cameron Titleist Red X club. Now, Scotty Cameron, he makes clubs custom for the pros. I mean, almost all the golf pros on tour now have a Scotty Cameron. And some of the Scotty Camerons go for $10,000. That's how hot he is. And almost none of them are less than $350 or more, or $1,000. Uh, in fact, if you go to a, even a PGA store a, or a second swing store, you'll see um, stuff in there for you know $1,000. So anyway, here is this one. And I looked it up. It's brand new. Guess what? $350. Brand new. So I decided I wanted to do a high volume, high velocity thing. I should have keep it, but uh, so I put it on on Friday and yesterday, which is Sunday, it sold. And I had it down for $150. Ended up that I uh, got $125. So I'm shipping it out today, but this is a real find when you take a look at Scotty Cameron and Titleist. He makes uh, the uh, putters for Titleist and what have you. So just a whole bunch of stuff. And you know what was really kind of funny? I think some pro must have given his clubs away because there were some Mizunos in there and different things. But guess what else I got? 
Well, here's two Odyssey putters. They were right with it. And here's a two ball Odyssey. Odysseys are the second hottest putter out there. They have surpassed pink. And they actually took over for some of the other companies that were out there that used to make uh, putters. They're probably the second most sold putter in the United States. These putters, brand new, are about $200. But again, they sell used for between $35 and $50. If you go to the retail stores that are selling the used clubs, they'll try to get $60 to $75. What I do, I put these down for maybe $40, and I'll get $30 for them all day long. You know, again, I could do the long tail. But there's quite a few of them out there, and I like to turn them. So I'm a little bit more into helping people get their golf game going and, uh, you know, getting that sort of going. Another thing uh, that I got here, I was kind of neat. Uh, this is a brand new club. This is a hippo. It's got a custom glow head on it. It's kind of a metallic green. Hippo is John Daly's club, brand new. This is a brand new uh, driver, paid $4 for it. I've actually stopped just waiting for dollar days now because I'm finding that if I don't, if I'm not willing to spend even $5 on stuff, I'm gonna lose it because there's starting to get to be more people out buying stuff. And, the, and so if you wait until the dollar day or the $2 days at Savers, the clubs are going to be gone, the good ones, the good resellers, because there's guys out there looking around. There's even stores that are out there shopping in the Goodwills now. So bought that club for uh, 5 bucks. Actually, I got 30% off. At Savers, you get a little card. If you get it filled up, you get 30% off anytime or senior day, which is, of course, uh, Tuesdays. You get 30% off. Uh, some other things that I bought... I bought a lot of putters because putters are really selling right now. This is golf season. Here's another really neat putter that's going to sell very quickly. Um, I mean, it goes on and on. Let me just show you a few of them. They're kind of neat. This is a knockoff of a Ping, and this is a t this is a Wilson. Uh, oh, this is Arnold Palmer, and it's got weighted. I don't know if you're aware, I've told you this before, but Arnold Palmer had over 10,000 putters in his garage because he had a problem. He got the yips and he started having a problem putting. So he just tried everything. And he went, hung out with uh, all the, um, the slot line guys and they were trying to custom make stuff. Here's a left-handed Wilson. Again, it's kind of a uh, ping knockoff. The pings, of course, are still hot, but they don't make their standard putters much anymore. They make pretty exotic putters. Here's another, uh, this is really a nice, this is a rolling putter. Look at that. This is fantastic. I paid two dollars for this putter. This putter is a sixty dollar putter, easily, with the slot line and everything. It's a two ball. This putter will, uh, like I said, I'll probably end up getting $40 for it. Um, and here's another Roland. This is the Roland with the uh, metallic balls on it. Reflector balls. Really, really neat stuff. And these are A lot of these are brand new. I don't know where they're coming from. If some guy or some shop went in there and uh, decided to do that. Another thing I got, and I've, I've been selling a lot of clubs. I just sold a Jack Nicholas 8 iron. It's in here somewhere. I brought it in here to, for you to see. But also, um, I'll buy clubs, the sand wedges, the 9 irons, uh, the clubs that people are generally going to lose on the golf course. And what happens is they take their clubs to the green. You know, they leave their cart way out, especially if it's 90 degree where you have to leave the cart on the cart path and you have to walk across the fairway. Well, they bring a bunch of clubs and they walk into the green. A lot of times they leave their clubs on the green, they forget them, and they don't have, they're missing a club. Well, this club here is a high bore Cleveland. 
And uh, these clubs are very expensive. Well, I found this lady's club. It's a seven iron, and it's a graphite. Got it for, uh, let's see, what did I pay for this? I paid a buck and a half for this, because this was Saturday. Um, and so that club will sell eventually. It'll be a long tail item. So some gal that lost her club, she'll want to buy it, because this club, brand new, is $200, the Cleveland High Boards. Here's a, a really good club also, and one, one of the clubs that you want to buy for resale are the hybrids. They're very, very hot right now. People don't hit their five irons, four irons, or their uh, uh, three irons anymore. They buy the hybrids, the rescues, and so it goes by degree. So you're going to, this happens to be a 18 degree, which is probably more like a three iron. And so, if you're going into the business of reselling clubs, you don't have to buy the whole set of clubs and try to resell them. Most people now are just looking for the specialty clubs to help them uh, get through some of their issues. Uh, let's see what else I got here. There's a neat club right here. I just sold a couple beryliums. And this is a beryllium. Let's see what kind it is. This is a Wilson Beryllium with square grooves. Now, people love this club because this puts a lot of action on the uh, ball. And so they were outlawed at one time. Well, nowadays nobody cares. But you can take and hit down on that ball, and you can just all day long put the spin on it and bite it, bite it so it stops. It doesn't roll off the green. So, Anyway, those are some of the clubs that we got this week. Um, bought a set of Olimers, which I was really excited about. You don't see the Olimer irons. Olimer was known for their woods, but they got in the iron business and they're very rare to find. So that's what happens with the woods. So, anyway. Here, Charlie. Come on, come on, boy. So, Charlie, my dog, is keeping the big bad wolf out of the house so I I want him out here again it's such a beautiful day another thing that was really fun and this was on Friday we went to the estate sale Eric and I and this guy had hundreds and hundreds of vehicles little model metal cars in it and um, of course these cars you can sell them for maybe around $25, uh, whatever. I bought this car for $6. It's a Corvette, it's a 64 Corvette Coupe. Well, guess what? I had one just like it. It was uh, kind of a car that I enjoyed in my life when I was younger. And so this is for me. And uh, I could have bought a bunch of those cars. In fact, she said she would have sold them to me for probably five dollars if I would have bought 20 of them which would have been a hundred vehicles and then here I did buy a 40 uh, Ford because I had one of these also and so this is more for me than anything else I may sell it because it's in the box but um, if you're into that you know you're gonna run into these collectors that have hundreds and hundreds of things I've run into several of them I haven't really found it to be that lucrative. From my perspective, I'm trying to generate at least $30 profit per sale right now. You know, you can go out and you can buy things that are, um, where you're going to buy it for a dollar and maybe sell for 10 But you think about all the time and effort, and then you're paying listing fees. So when you're putting these things on eBay, you're paying, I pay 20 cents because I'm a store, you, if you start out, are going to start paying 30 cents a month for a listing fee. Well, for all year long, that's only $4. But then when you sell the product, let's say you sell for 10, there's another dollar. So you got $5 into that product if it doesn't turn right away. And then if you're only going to make 10, you're only making $5. And you got to buy the envelopes and different things. I mean, we're selling shirts all day long right now and we call these our bread and butter things uh, we sold probably 10 shirts this weekend 
which was, you know, they're between 10 and 15 down. So we only paid a buck for them. But they're our bread and butter. But you buy the envelopes, they're a buck and a half and um, everything. They pay the postage. Usually you can get the postage to cover that. So I am changing my game plan into trying to at least net $30. So that's usually five times what you pay for it. So if you pay five bucks for this putter, I'm trying to get, you know, at least 25 for it. Then I know uh, that I'm, I've got the profit that I need. And if you look at even a lot of retail outlets, they're trying to get, you know, 100%, 200% on their return. Well, on reselling, you should be able to do that because you can't get the same product uh, at when you want. You may have to look for another product. If you find something like that, Scotty Cameron, I may never find another one of those. So you have to make your money on it when you can because you're not going to see it again. So I have a little sort of coffee. There's my cup. I was going to sell this, but I love it too much. I get too many comments. Ugly face cup. So I'm uh, drinking my coffee out of it. And um, I'll be driving down the road and drinking my coffee, and I get the thumbs up from people. So, anyway, another thing I bought was this copper music box. It's a golfer box. It's got the clubs and the guys going around it. And the, the song is The Impossible Dream, which is the golfer's thing, you know. When am I going to ever hit the, uh, the shot? the hole in one or whatever and so it's something kind of funny uh, but I paid five bucks for it got it listed for 35 should sell here's a Budweiser mug just spectacular and this is really in nice shape um, I haven't listed this stuff yet I've been out buying and the part of the problem is you know you gotta take pictures you got to go online and you got to put a nice description on it. You do some research to see what the price of it should be, what it's going. And so again, you do need to know what you're doing. Another thing I bought at a garage sale. This was cool. I thought this was a Zorro hat. So that I saw it and then had two bucks on it. And the guy says, no, this isn't a Zorro hat. He said, this is an Amish hat. This has been handmade by people in uh, they were from uh, Pennsylvania. Beautiful wool hat. It was handmade. And so, uh, you know, I don't know what I'll put on it. I gotta look it up. Probably 20 bucks, 25 dollars, but a beautiful, perfect shape. You could use it as a Zorro hat too if you want. One of the things I did buy, I thought was kind of cool, Gary Patterson. Now Gary Patterson, he is known for drawing golfer cartoons and that kind of thing and he had calendars a lot of calendars that he would have a different funny drawing and they're always kind of a spoof on golf I paid a buck for this and uh, I'm not sure I'll sell it but if it did if I did you know it'd probably be worth at least 20 bucks the frame alone is worth twenty dollars so you know, that's kind of where that is also you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, lamps. This lamp here, when we buy these at Goodwills and Savers and Estate Sales, you buy these for a buck. And the lamp business is a tremendous business to get into if you're just going to get into lamps. Because people are constantly needing lamps. Here's a really eclectic kind of thing. I don't know if you can see it there. This is kind of neat. Look at that. Pretty cool. Anyway, really heavy. <laughs> These lamps, you can sell all day long for $100, $150 if you're going to get into the lamp business. You want to make sure they work and everything. But certainly, you want to kind of have a niche or two that you're really good at. And you need to learn how to ship those things. I mean, uh, this one here would be a little more fragile. but Again, there's a tremendous opportunity to sell lamps, and um, just wanted to show a few that we bought. We usually sell these locally. Uh, we don't go and ship them out, and uh, so I want to make sure you 
you know that there's an opportunity there with the lamps too. Like I mentioned, I focus mainly on golf. And then the second thing I kind of focus on is clothing. And we've been selling suits left and right. Now, look at this suit. This is a Johnny Carson three-piece suit. I think you can see it. Just a beautiful suit. Uh, we've been, I just sold a suit last week for $75, three-piece suit. Again, I paid $4 for that suit. I bought 10 of them. And I only got a couple of them posted and they've already sold. I love the suits. So we're going to definitely um, sell suits. And um, but look at that nice, beautiful three-piece Johnny Carson. It's a beautiful suit to go to a wedding in the spring, in the summer. The other thing we've been doing is selling shirts. It's wedding time, and the young people don't wear suits. They wear just a nice shirt. I Again, I focus on the big sizes, but um, it's uh, something really to think about if you're going to get into the suit business, too, to um, make sure they're in good shape. And, you know, you can buy them cheap. People don't want to mess with them. Some suits you can sell for two or $300 easily, Armani and uh, Bravoni. I mean, just remember, there's a lot of different kinds of suits out there, too. So I'm just uh, looking here. I wanted to get you updated on some things. Um, you know, we did our, we're did. we going to try just some jeans, see what happens with some blue jeans. We bought them right, too. And um, like I mentioned, you want to diversify. You want to have a couple niches that you know what you're talking about and really understand them. But then at some point, you want to diversify and see what else maybe can supplement you when your uh, niche is off season or what have you. So anyway, uh, I'll let you go. Mark Mulligan, I hope uh, this helps you out with some things. And uh, have a good day, and I'll put a video together again next week. Take care.